All right, everybody. The Boston Celtics went down to South Beach and did what they needed to do. They are coming back to the TD Garden on Wednesday night to try and close out the series with a 3-1 series lead after a Game 4 victory. Of course, there's a couple of topics we got to get into tonight. KP injury, bam, flagrant towards the end. We got a few things we need to get into, so that's all coming up next here on Agreeing with Envy Postgame. Let's lock in. What up, what up, what up? Welcome into another edition of Green with Envy. This is a post-game edition, game recap. And if you're watching us on YouTube, it's not even to us. You'll notice it's just your boy today. Just me hanging out tonight. Greg's got uh, some, some stuff going on tonight. So I'm going to be filling in solo dolo. Shout out to Kay Cuddy here. So this might be the musings of a madman. So I'm going to do my best here to give you all of my thoughts from this game here as the Celtics take a 3-1 to one series lead with a 102-88 to 88 victory over the Miami Heat. As I mentioned at the top, we have a few things that we'll need to get into. So I'm going to start with the game here. And then, of course, you know, the big thing on everybody's mind is is that second quarter in which right towards the end, right before the half, Chris Stapps Porzingis limps off. Uh, as of right now, uh, Chris Haynes reported it was calf tightness. Uh, Woj then followed up about middle of the third quarter that there'll be some more uh, imaging tomorrow, but they believe that he's avoided Achilles injury. Uh, but calf injuries, they're, they're all the rage in the NBA right now. Giannis is dealing with a calf. Jamal Murray, who's playing as I'm recording this in the as they try to close as the Nuggets try to close out the Lakers, uh, he was game time decision. He's playing with a calf injury, so uh, that'll definitely be something that I will circle back on to give my thoughts. But let's start with this game here, and you know the Celtics end up with a 14 point victory, relatively you know easy victory, despite the fact that I don't really think they played their best basketball. But one guy who, who played above and beyond his best basketball was Derek White tonight. And Derek White is the absolute first place that we need to start with this game because he was specifically on uh, on offense. And, and, you know, of course, defensively, he's always bringing it. Three blocks tonight for Derek White. But Derek White in 41 minutes, 15 of 26 from the field, 8 of 15 from the three-point line, a career a playoff high, 38 points, four rebounds, three assists, three-block game from Derek White. Uh, and he really was the guy that just had it going on consistently for the Celtics tonight. Not the Jays' best game. We'll talk about that. But Derek White was the guy that had it going on early, had it going on often. 38 points. Really special when you can look at what I would say is probably your fourth option on this team. And then with your third option going down just before halftime in Chris Tapps Porzingis. And it's a luxury that you have a guy like Derek White that can fill in and drop 38 points. But, you know, from the jump with this game, uh, it, it was one the Celtics were, were going to have to to lock in because you knew Miami was going to be playing with a little bit of desperation because this, this potentially could be their last home game of the season. It should be. But let's, let's even say it that way. This should be the last home game for the Miami Heat this season as the Celtics hopefully are going to close this out come Wednesday night. But for the Miami Heat, you know, you knew they were going to come out playing a little bit of desperation. It felt early on like they got to a couple, you know, 50-50 loose balls. But even if the Celtics, I don't think their defense was quite as locked in as it was for, for game three. This was still a very, very stout defensive performance from the Celtics. You saw that with the Heat only scoring 12 points in the second quarter. And if you look up and down the Miami Heat roster, you know, Tyler Hero got off to a solid start in that first quarter. I believe he had nine points and either three or four assists, finished the game with only 10 points those last three quarters, a few of that coming in the fifth, or excuse me, in the fourth quarter, and and ended up with five turnovers to four assists. So again, a negative assist to turnover ratio for Tyler Hero. That's not going to get it done. We know that they also need to kind of shift the balance when it comes to the three-point line. Tonight for the Miami Heat, only 9 of 33, 27%. Celtics, 14 of 37, just under 38%. Celtics win the three-point line here, 14 to 9. Again, not a, a Miami Heat cannot succeed if they do not win that three-point battle. And 
maybe the biggest thing you need to know about where the Miami Heat are in looking for answers. And I know Kevin Love talked about uh, there's going to be a new wrinkle or a new game plan they feel really good about. You know, from a just game just wrapped here, they started the very first possession of the game in the zone. Celtics have kind of tortured the zone, which has been the Achilles heel of the Celtics many times in these last couple of playoff battles against the Miami Heat. Uh, has not been the case in this series. Was not the case again tonight. And I, I think the Heat tried to just kind of keep the Celtics on their toes. They tried to push the pace a little bit, tried to go from man back to zone, try to throw them off a little bit. Uh, like I said, not a great offensive night for the Celtics outside of of Derek White, but defensively, you know, this, the Celtics were there, and, and Miami just didn't have enough answers. Yeah, Hero, like I said, was hot early, and, and that was about it. And, and they were so desperate to look for some type of answer. Patty Mills played 22 minutes in this game. Patty Mills has not been relevant since the last Olympics. It has been quite a while since Patty Mills has been a threat in the postseason, and he's getting 22 minutes of run, eight shots, nine off the bench for him. So the Heat are really kind of desperate, trying to find something. Not really sure what was going on with, with Nikola Jovic today. Only 17 minutes for him, only four shots. So maybe there was something going on with, with Jovic. Maybe Spo was, was trying to you know, go a little bit smaller. I, you know, it, like I said, I think they're kind of shooting blank at this point. It's it's going to be tough for them to find a way. So so let's go back to, to the Celtics here. And, you know, Derek White was huge tonight. I went over his stat line. He was, you know, white hot, if you will, Miami Heat playoff slogan, 8 of 15 from the three-point line. And he really carried this offense. So you look at the Jays, for example, wasn't a bad night for the Jays, but it certainly wasn't their best night. It really wasn't. And it's, you know, probably a little bit of recency bias. There's there's part of me that after what we just witnessed this this past weekend, specifically on Sunday, where all the stars came out and played like stars, you know, I was probably looking at, at Jalen and Jason a little bit like, all right, are we going to respond here? And of course, Derek White was the guy that was the star in this game and had one of those performances like we saw the other day with Jalen Brunson. And we saw with everybody in the Clippers Mavs games, Luca 29 point triple double Kyrie, uh, Paul George and James Harden going for 30 plus Anthony Edwards. Good. God, putting the Suns to bed, even Devin Booker, 40 plus in that game. So it was definitely a below average game for the, for the Jays, but not a bad game. I mean, you look at Jason Tatum's stat line, 20 points, 11 rebounds, five assists. Uh, Jalen Brown, 17 points, five rebounds, two assists, two steals, did have six turnovers. Uh, but I think they made enough impact in in the right moments. You know, I think specifically towards the the end of the second quarter after KP leaves it feels like the momentum switching a little bit Jason Tatum hits a massive massive three point shot that you know it's 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 tough to say massive when i think it put them up either 15 or 17 at the time but with that momentum kind of hanging in the balance at that moment that really was a a big shot for Jason Tatum to hit and then Jalen Brown comes out in the third quarter and scores the first five points to kind of establish the Celtics with that that breathing room that never got closer than I know it ended up here at a, at a 14 point game. I think they got it down to maybe 12, 13. And of course, you know, we're Celtics fans. We had a little bit of PTSD, you know, it was creeping in there. It was in the back of my mind. It's in the back of your mind too, probably as you're listening to this, it's okay. It's, it's just what we're going to have to live with this, with this team. You know, other people have a lot worse issues to live with from their playoff basketball teams than, than we do. But you know, that that's, that's something that, that we live with and we deal with. And so that's what happens. But ultimately, Celtics hold on, never gets less than about that 12-point margin. And so I think the Jays did enough, and of course, some emphatic dunks all around from Jalen Brown to Jason Tatum and Derek White. Derek with two dunks on basically the same exact play on that back cut. You got Drew Holiday down there on the right block. Uh, just, a, just a cut from the top of the key and comes flying in and probably shouldn't have had an and one each time and you know you don't, you don't see Derek White go high flying too often but it was that type of night Derek White just just extremely special night tonight for him uh Drew Holiday four of ten from the field you know I, I some people didn't love that little video that that we put up but of course when you put out a short clip without the full context make sure you listen to the full podcast you'll get the full view of of what we were discussing uh during the last episode and I mean, Drew Holiday came into this game averaging six points on 28% shooting. It, it hadn't been been really great offensively. He's been great defensively. Want to make sure people know that. We're very aware. Drew Holiday on defense, very, very special. Uh, tonight, he was 4-10. You know, early on, uh, Missoula 
certainly made it feel like it was a, a part of the game plan to, you know, the Jays will get theirs. Let's get Porzingis. Let's get White. Let's get Drew Holiday going. Most of the shots in the first quarter uh, went to those three. Drew Holiday, 4 of 10, did knock down a three in this game, had 11 points, six rebounds, six assists. So, of course, making his impact all over. Um, but for the Celtics, this this all came down to just Derek White having, having the ball in his hands. Uh, we've said it over and over again. Give the ball to Derek White good things will happen and that's what you get tonight you get a 3-1 series lead Celtics heading back home to defend home court and hopefully close this series out on Wednesday night now a few other matters at hand here that that we need to discuss I mentioned Chris Stapps Porzingis I'm going to save that here for a minute so hang in with me I, I wanted to address the Bam Adebayo flagrant foul in the in the fourth quarter where he seemed to be very shocked that yeah maybe putting your foot in someone's landing zone after the whistle, which, you know, trying to contest a shot. Yeah. That's, it's fucking illegal, dude. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what it is. It's illegal when the play is happening. It's illegal when the play is over and, you know, for him to be shocked by that, I was, I, I didn't understand it. And then Stan Van Gundy. And I know some people are listening to the Mike Gorman scout call living out here in, in, in Austin watching via league pass. I uh, don't have that option. So I have to watch the TNT broadcast and yeah, I'm, I'm usually, relatively indifferent when it comes to the announcers the fuck out of here stan the fuck out i'm done i don't i don't i don't need your bullshit anymore it was very obvious what happened on that particular play there's a foul called tatum takes a dribble goes to take a, a shot after the whistle happens every game all the time very common what also happens is people might contest that shot they might throw a hand up we've seen joe Missoula do it and we've seen them do it in a way that they don't put the shooter in any type of harm's way to play after the whistle very clearly after the whistle bam takes a step in puts his hand on tatum's hip his foot is very clearly in the landing zone where tatum is is coming down and to me it's just what are you doing what are you doing and then acting like you you didn't do that now i'm not saying he went to intentionally hurt him but let's be real every this happens so often in so many in so many nba games Every single player knows how to do the the contest. Like Missoula, up until the point of being in the the landing zone for Jason Tatum, would have agreed with Bam Adebayo, and I do too. Yeah, put your hand up in his face. Let him get a get a free look. Fine, but then to act like you weren't where you were, and then surprised, and and luckily it looks like Jason Tatum's gonna be okay. Stay in the game. We'll we'll have to see. I'm sure he'll end up on the injury report leading up to Game Five. Some type of ankle soreness, um, but seemed to be okay. But yeah, bullshit from Bam Adebayo. And then, you know, I, I love Uncle Al coming in, giving him a little shove. Got to have, uh, you know, someone there that's that's that muscle, right? And he's, he's, got, he's got grown man strength, old man strength, too, from Al Horford. So I uh, wanted to talk just a little bit about that. Yeah, I thought that was crazy that that Bam Adebayo and then Stan Van Gundy on the TNT call um, were kind of blaming Tatum for that or or didn't think that there should be a, a flagrant of, of any kind on that. I I, I just don't get it. We've, we've been looking at that that shot that that type of event since whatever it was 2017 i believe since zaza patrulia pulled up on on Kawhi leonard and you know we we see that type of replay over and over again so it's it was very clear what happened and you know they got the flagrant Celtics got the win is what it is moving on series heading back to boston now let's go over to the kp news and this is the one that Long term, obviously, is going to have the biggest set of implications here going forward. Chris Tapps Porzingis, we've talked many times uh, amongst ourselves here on the show with guests, specifically Mike Gorman, Drew Carter, even recently when he was on as an appearance. Uh, you know, the X factor is Chris Tapps Porzingis. It above and beyond even the Drew Holiday upgrade over over Marcus Smart. What makes this team? unique and different from the last couple of seasons is Chris Stapps Porzingis. His ability to just be as big as he is, to be 7'3", to be able to take the shots that he takes four or five feet behind the three-point line, to be able to be that back-of-line defender. Um, you know, there's there's so many different elements that, that Chris Stapps has brought to this team. 
And for the most part, the Celtics have been really lucky with avoiding, you know, any major injuries. And, and we don't know what this is going to be right now. Like I said, Chris Haynes at halftime called it calf tightness. Uh, Woj then came in um, over the top rope, as he always does here, with one of his tweets that kind of as you read it, you're you're almost fearing uh, worse and worse. So from Woj, I'll just read it directly. Boston Celtics center Chris Stapps Porzingis right calf will undergo imaging on Tuesday, but early indications are that he hasn't sustained an Achilles injury, sources tell ESPN. So potentially avoid an Achilles injury, which is great. Doesn't mean we're out of the woods, though. Um, as I said, calf injuries seem to be all the rage in the NBA. Ask Giannis, ask Jamal Murray. Uh, you know, so it, it doesn't mean that we're, we're out of the woods. And I was texting with a few friends and so first of all, I noticed the the, the first play where uh, I believe it was Tyler Hero uh, was driving and you know KP went up to contest and, and came up gimpy. Noticed it right away the first time. A couple plays later, he stays in the game. Seems like he's kind of working through it. Things are all going to be okay. And then when he goes to set that screen and you see him just immediately pull up, put his hand up. That was one that that, that was tough. And then as he's walking towards the back. To me, when he goes and puts his jersey over his mouth, screams into it, it, it really reminded me of Zion in the play-in game against Lakers. N no idea if it's the same injury, and I, I can't remember Zion's injury top of my head right now either. But what these two guys have in common is two very injury-riddled histories, right? These guys know what it feels like to be injured. And at this point, with all of the list of injuries that those type of guys have had, it makes me feel like they know right away when this is a bad one. This is nothing. This is a bad one. If you have that much experience in anything, you start to get very familiar with the beats and rhythms of whatever it is that is happening. So, you know, maybe it's an injury that KP's had before, so he knows exactly what it's feeling. Maybe he doesn't. I don't know. But the way that he screamed into his jersey out of frustration very much felt like the same thing that you, we saw Zion do uh, in the play. And when he had to take himself out after he was going off against the Lakers for 40 plus, I'd uh, had to take himself out the last two, three minutes of that game. And ultimately the Lakers went on to win and he hasn't been able to play in this first round series. So when it comes to KP, I, I would be shocked if we see him. We, we, actually, I'm not going to be shocked. We, we won't see him again in this Miami series. Uh, the Celtics, without Chris Dabbs Porzingis, we saw Luke Cornett get some run in the second half. Xavier Tillman, he's going to be, you know, stay ready, crew. Going to need to be ready. Uh, he'll be available in Game 5. And Game 5 of the series is this, this is one of the games that the Celtics need to close out. This is Game 5 last year against the Hawks that they didn't went six and then you went back to then you went basically into a series in the next round against Philly where you're going every other day and you added yourself a couple extra days to that to that rhythm when you could have spared yourself could have spared Al Horper could have spared you know the the tread on the tires that's coming with all these guys Malcolm Brogdon got hurt eventually down the line I'm not saying that's that's directly related to it but if you can get time off in the playoffs you absolutely have to do it so this becomes a must win game the Celtics have won the last couple of games here by double, double by double digits, won them emphatically. Game five is a must-win game. Up 3-1, a team with true championship aspirations and knowing the circumstances around this. Tatum just rolled his ankle. KP is going to be out with whatever this injury is. You absolutely have to close this out because KP is not coming back for this series, If it, even if it ends up going to game six. He's not coming back. Now you start to think, what is this going to mean potentially for – you know, how long he'll be out. And, and like I said, I'm completely wildly speculating. I have no idea. We'll know more tomorrow. But my best guess is we're probably without Chris Apps for a little bit here. It's going to be a little stretch. And so you start to look at that Magic Cavs series. And if you expect the Celtics to do what they should do, even without KP, you know, they're, they're done with their series on Wednesday. Right now, Cavs Magic is 2-2. So we know definitively they have a game I'm recording this here Monday night right after the Celtics game. They'll be playing game five on Tuesday. They actually haven't had their break in their series yet where they get two days off. They have one more of those coming up. So they're not playing game six no matter what until Friday night. So if you win on Wednesday, there's no chance that you can even play a game until at least 
at least probably that Sunday. So you're giving yourself a few extra days here from Wednesday to Sunday. And that's if the Cavs and the Cavs and magic do not go to game seven, because their game seven would be on Sunday. And therefore game one could only be as early as they have to give them at least a day off for travel. So then it wouldn't be until at least Tuesday. So Cavs magic, which looks like it has, I would say a pretty good chance of going to seven games. If you get this done, on Wednesday night, there's a good chance you're giving yourself six full days of rest to be able to get back and, and see what treatment, see where we're at, where it comes for for Chris Stapps. If there is anything lingering from Jason Tatum rolling his ankle here at the end of the game on that flagrant foul, you're going to want to have that rest opportunity, too. So it, we're going to have to see where that where that all lands. But that's what makes this game five an absolute must win for the Celtics. Potentially give yourself a chance to rest from Wednesday to Tuesday. Uh, and then you look at this Cavs and, and Magic team. And like I said, if Chris Stapps is going to be out for a couple weeks, these are two really big teams. Jared Allen, Evan Mobley on one side. On the other side, you've got, you know, Wendell Carter. You've got Jonathan Isaac. Paolo's huge. Franz is a big guy. You got Mo Wagner. You got guys that are, are going to be in the mix there. Um, you know, Goga, you get you got a lot of guys that it's, it's going to be tougher to get by without Chris Stapps in that series than probably you would think. The Celtics still should. Keyword, should get by in that series without Chris Stapps, but because he is that X factor, it's going to be just that much tougher. So Celtics got to protect home court, make the 37 and four over this whole regular season, make it mean something, close the heat out game five, make a statement. Let's get some rest and let's keep it moving. That's going to do it for this episode here of Green with Envy. Uh, coming up on Thursday, I will have Greg Ride and Shotgun with me. We will be doing a Thursday live stream, as we always do, 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central. Working on a special surprise for that one. So if you're listening right now, I'm telling you, you're getting the inside scoop here. You do want to tune into that. We'll make the announcement uh, morning of the show once it is locked in and confirmed. Still working out uh, a few scheduling quirks here, but 5 p.m. Eastern. 4 p.m. Central. Come join us. Hopefully, we'll be discussing closing out the Miami Miami Heat series and moving on to the conference semifinals. Uh, but for now, we're going to wrap this up here, and I'm going to send you off with some Black Sheep Optimus. So please enjoy, and we will catch you guys later this week. Peace. Till I hit the floor Every time I hit this high It's you I find It don't take much no more Until I'm at your door You call me to my floor, baby what can I say? You got me on the floor, you know I came to play. I know I shouldn't, but you seem to take my pain away. And every time I score, Jason Tatum fade away. I close my eyes and I'm floating your river. I call to see if you open, you know I hope you deliver. Every time you